Hey, what's up guys? Forrest Knight here. Currently on the way home from the gym. It is about eight, between 8 and 8.30. And about to get to some iOS development. I'm excited to start this journey with you guys. Today we'll be going over the way I'm going to refresh my brain, or in y'all's case, learn from scratch iOS development. So, let's get to it. So there are three courses that I narrowed it down to. You know, there's a whole lot of iOS 10 or iOS 9 development courses, iOS development courses out there. And it was, you know, you have to narrow it down to a select group, so I narrowed it down to three. The first being this one on iTunes U. It is free. It is Stanford University's iOS 9 development course. Developing iOS 9 apps with Swift. And this one seems really good. It's free. It's from Stanford, right? But it all depends on how you learn because let's let's just take a look a quick look at the the first episode of this course. Stanford University. All right, well, welcome to Stanford CS 193P. This is uh, spring of the 2016 uh, version, and today I'm gonna. Get so I'm going to skip ahead. As you can see, it's it's uh you know they have a slideshow and whatnot, but I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Oh, you can see there's a little bit more of a slideshow. Build. Okay, so you probably know all that. Next speed. So what we learned in this class, you're going to learn to build cool apps. All right, iOS apps are cool. Why are they cool? Well, they're cool because they sit in your pocket. And you can bring it out and show your friends. Uh, they're so as you can see, it's more so like a classroom setting. You're able to see the slides while the professor talks. And the professor is 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 pretty enthusiastic. I've I've taken an older Stanford course, at least I started off taking it, but I quit because I didn't have the drive or the the desire to do it at the time. It kind of stinks. Imagine where I'd be now, right? Imagine where you guys will be in a year or two if you stick with with learning iOS development right now. Don't say, oh, I can learn it in a year or so. Be, a, be, be able to create your own app in a year or so, not just starting to learn in a year or so. But getting off topic. This one's more like a classroom setting, and all of the teacher seems to be engaging and enthusiastic. It's just not my cup of tea. You know, I, I take enough classes at my school right now. I don't want to take another one online. So I, I I eliminated that one, and the other two are on Udemy. First, we're going to take a look at the complete iOS 10 developer course, Build 21 Apps by Rob Percival. Sorry if I butchered that last name, but by Rob. And he's popular, especially on Udemy, and especially within iOS development. He's been putting out iOS development courses on Udemy for quite some time. I have his... I believe iOS 7 development course that I went through a little bit and for a, a big turnoff just for me and this is definitely you know this is definitely my my fault is that he has an accent that I, it's just harder for me I can understand exactly what he says but it it just doesn't keep my attention span as long as 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 I, and I'm I'm blaming it on the accent I, I'm not sure why I I think that's why it is or I think that's why I'm kind of turned off by some of his videos is because of the accent. But I could be wrong. It could just be maybe he's monotone or I don't know. Let's check out this video. Uh, just just a small little first 15 seconds of it. Hi. Do you want to learn to code by building over 20 apps for iPhone and iPad? My name's Rob and I'm the creator of the world's most popular coding courses with over 400,000 students and 20,000 five-star reviews. So over 400,000 students, like I said, it's me that, and you can tell he's very well-spoken. I can understand every little thing he's saying. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's, it kind of bothers me because I really want to take his course. And I do recommend you guys to, to check out either Stanford course or this course. You don't have to do the course that I'm about to show you next, even though that's what I'm going to do. And... It may be sounding like that's one of the main reasons. Well, it is one of the main reasons, but that's not the absolute main reason. Is because as I come down here, I don't see 
Firebase, that he's using Firebase, unless I'm missing something. Yeah, see, see, he uses, uh, see, Rob uses par, uh, the Parse server, which he's always used Parse, and, you know, when, what was it, Facebook dropped Parse, stopped supporting it, they allowed it to be open source, so now they have Parse server, which is open source, good in the community, it's a good, good software, but I really want to learn Firebase, so that's what I'm going to do. And... That is what this course over here, iOS 10 and Swift 3 from Beginner to Pay Professional by Mark Price, who is the owner and founder of DevSlips, I believe. And let's take a quick look at his video. I, I went up a little bit because this is just like people reviewing it. Hi, my name is Mark Price with DevSlips and welcome to iOS 10 from Beginner to Pay Professional where I'm going to take you from absolute novice to professional iOS developer in a matter of weeks. I have taught over 40,000 students how to code, and this iOS 10 course is my best course yet, packed with brand new content with Swift 3 and iOS 10's latest features. This course is packed with over 35 hours of video content. Not only are you going to learn iOS development, but you're also going to learn how to design apps. You're going to learn Objective-C as well, so you can read libraries and apply for jobs. You're also going to master the brand new Firebase, things like push notifications and how to store images on a server and build full stack applications. So, as you saw that he, or as you heard, he mentioned Firebase. They're going to go over Firebase in this course. And, oh yeah, and also he teaches at the end of the course, or there's, you know, there's curriculum at the end of the course that teaches you Objective-C and it, from my understanding, it relates the Swift that you've learned to Objective C, so it's not just boom, Objective C. It kind of allows you to migrate from Swift to Objective C, and that's important because if you're going to apply for a job, a lot of those applications are made in Objective C. They haven't had time to go through, if they even want to, to go through all their apps and change it to Swift, which I doubt people are doing now because you know Objective C is set in stone. It's a good language, but Swift, Swift is definitely the future. I made a I made a video on that, or I'm about to make a video on that, whether it's up or not, as of the, as of you viewing, viewing this, I'm not sure. But Swift is definitely the future. But there's a lot of people stuck in the past, and you may want to get a job at one of those places. So, so there's definitely demand within Objective C. Another thing about this is is that he said that he's only taught 40,000 people how to code, which is a lot. Then Rob over here has taught 400,000 students how to code, and you know when it, he, he's had 400,000 students buy his course, that's what it, that really means. But before I decide to purchase this, I came down to the reviews, or I clicked on the reviews here, and I wanted to check out the one-star reviews. You know, of course, there's going to be a lot of five stars, a lot of four stars, but I checked out the one star and the two star, and maybe some of the three stars. One of the big ones, or there's two, but one of the big ones that stuck out to me was was that Mark uses two guest teachers. One of which, there was a complaint that his accent was bad. It was the guy who went over the Tipsy app. So what I did was come over, and they have previews on a lot of their, a lot of their stuff. So I came over to this and previewed it just to see what this guy, you know, how he spoke. Provides a tip for you, anywhere from 25 to I don't know 10 percent, whatever. And I don't know if that guy was just trolling or or whatever, but that guy didn't sound like he had a different accent compared to Mark. I could understand him. He spoke a little slow, but you're able to speed this up about two times or maybe more. Let's go back. Yeah, you're able to speed it up two times or slow it down if need be up to two times with everything, a couple things in between. So that'll be convenient for him. Another complaint that I saw was one guy, whether it was this guy or the other guest teacher that he uses, not Mark, but one of the ones that Mark uses, uh, liked to go kind of off topic where, you know, something that should take five minutes takes 15 minutes for this guy. That was, that's, that's what the guy, that's what the reviewer said. But I think that's something I'll be able to get by. They're only on a couple lectures, I believe. I'm not sure. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> but I definitely 
I'm going to use this course. You guys can use whatever you want. Another reason I'm drawn to this is because it has a chat room. So let's go to DevSlips. I've already typed this in. And if you go to DevSlips Dev website and you go over to Talk Code, accept an invite. There's going to be a video that wants to play over here. So let's get out of that. And they have all these different chat rooms. It kind of looks like Slack, where it has general, it has DevSlips app. And it also has a course, iOS 10, which this is the Udemy course, I believe. So other people who are taking the Udemy course are able to chat with each other or some other people who are doing iOS and Swift. Whatever you have a question about, you put it into that. And there's, there's a couple other ones as well. And that's, I really like what he's doing there because that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this. I'm trying to bring everyone who is in the same position together which is like you and me who are trying to create our first real iOS application. You know, I've created like a resume app. You know, maybe maybe you haven't created an app at all or you have no clue how to how to open up Xcode or how to create something on Xcode. And that's that's fine. We'll go over all that. I'm not here to teach. I'm here to kind of bring you guys along with me so we can collaborate together, whether it's working on an app together, whether I'm having trouble that and y'all can answer it, or whether y'all are having trouble and I can answer it. That's really the goal here, and we're just going to have a good time together so you don't feel like you're all alone in this process. And that's that's how I felt like the past couple of years. You know, I would try to learn it, and i kind of give up, and i try to learn it again. And I'm really trying to give you guys, as well as myself, you know, people to communicate with who are in the same position. So that's really what this channel, this YouTube channel is going to be about. You know, I'm going to have some other things as well, like I mentioned in my my trailer video, which is kind of like the intro to this, this series. But mainly it's going to be about this. So you guys can use... Oh, for the record, I do plan on taking the Stanford University course because that's more that's more suited for for computer science. I'm a computer science major in school. We don't really have a, a good iOS course. We have one but it's not really offered too often. But luckily you can take the Stanford one for free online. I'm going to take that but I'm going to use that more so for the computer science side instead of the software developer side. There's a difference it, and it just goes a lot more in depth than I want to right now. I want to be able to, to take it, take baby steps, and I'm going to go with this course first. Oh, and for the record, both these courses say $50, but once you put them in the cart, at least in August, I'm sure they'll have deals in the future. Make sure you look for some type of coupon. Make sure whenever you look at the course, you put it in the cart to see what kind of discount. It's a 40% off discount, so each of them are 30. I'm not getting both. I just put them both in here for easy, easy access for this video. I really look forward to creating this with you guys and just going through the process of this. Also, I'm going to be taking this course, you know, as often as I can and creating it as often as I can, but also what I'm going to do between tonight and tomorrow night is create a storyboard. So, let me pull up storyboard. So this is a storyboard. I'm not going to create it online. I'm going to uh, draw it with pencil. And basically I'm just going to draw what I want. So I already know basically what I want, kind of like a social network. With, you know, it's going to have other things in it. Cause this is my stock market app I'm talking about. Because I want to be working on the stock market app all while learning and all while creating the simple apps just to build a good foundation on that app in order to hit the ground running really hard once I feel comfortable enough to do so, you know, within or after this course. So I know I'm going to have user profiles, I'm going to have feed like, you know, your Twitter feed or your Instagram feed or Facebook, I'm going to have something like that. I'm going to have the stock market uh, in it, just like, you know, if you have a stock market app, just like your app comes with, it's going to have, you know, stock market data on it that updates as the market goes on. I, You guys should do that as well. When you watch this video and you kind of know what you want 
either go to my next video, depending on when you watch this, go to my next video, see what I did, or just look at this storyboard here and create your storyboard. Write down exactly what you want your app to have. You know, I want user profile, I want I want time fee, I want this, I want that, I want people to be able to like this, and then put it on paper. Take it from your mind and put it on paper because that is the absolute best way to really visualize how your app's going to go. You don't necessarily have to say, all right, if I click this button, it's going to go to this one. If I click this, I'm just going to go to this one. You can do that a little later. You just kind of draw out your screen, your layout, your, your user interface. So I'm going to have that ready for you guys next video. But until then, have a good one.